So uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, shed a little bit of light on these mythical IPv60 OSs, which only I seem to experience. <laughs> so um, first of all, how many people know, have used or do use IRC or know what it is? That's not bad. I think you're in the right group. I, I think so. Well, Tim was a little bit concerned that people sure. might not know what was going on. But so IRC is the original internet chat protocol um, as invented by a teenager in Finland in the mid 80s, or at least that's what the legend is. And um, it's, still, it's still kind of chugging along. You know, everybody's using Slack, but um, there's still people who use open source projects. Some big companies still use IRC. We are actually working on making it better. There's um, IRC v3, which is a new um, working group which is extending it with modern features that, you, that everybody needs these days, like emoji reactions, uh, <laughs> highly important enterprise features, um, uh, optional, obviously. And so IRC Cloud is, uh, we're a tiny company, we're an ex startup, um, which uh, we have four employees, we're kind of based around the UK. Um, there's only one of me in London at the moment, and uh, we're building a modern IRC client for, you know, because it's the 20, 21st century now. Uh, we've got mobile apps and push notifications and all that good stuff and unified backlog. Um, but uh, because there's only four of us and because we're kind of self-funded or slightly profitable or a failed investment, depending on who you uh, listen to, um, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, we reliability and cost are a big deal for us because um, if things go wrong, then I don't really want to be spending my entire weekend because there's nobody else who can deal who can work with it. So, sorry, I have to um, advance both sets of slides at the same time for a reason that. Uh, so, um, tech details: we uh, we basically originate about twenty thousand IRC connections, and these are outbound TCP connections to IRC servers. Um, we and various other large numbers there for your for your delectation. Um, we don't like running our own infrastructure is part of this reliability cost thing. I can't really justify having a pile of actual servers and actual network hardware when I'm basically the only operations person. And in fact, it's only a quarter of me is the only operations person. So um, we have to be really. What I'm really keen on is making sure that I don't have to spend my entire weekend fixing things. That's like priority number one. Um, so we've got about 30 servers in managed and cloud hosting. They're all on the west coast of the US for reasons, um, which is additionally exciting. And the reason, uh, well, uh, the reason we use some managed hosting, I will come to in a second. But there we go. Um, we are, we've had IPv6 support for many years. Uh, I actually can't remember when we added it. Um, we've been around since 2010. I think we've had IPv6 support since very shortly after that. Um, IRC servers in general have been pretty early adopters of v6. Um, uh, I think that's just because the kind of target audience of IRC is, is the kind of people who would have Im implemented v6 10 years ago. Um, and 65% of our outbound IRC connections are v6. I have a suspicion, actually, that that could be much higher if our own IRC support server uh, wasn't only v4 only at the moment. So I really need to fix that. But uh, I'm blaming AWS for that because they didn't have the support until recently. So this is really useful for us because with v4, we have a limited number of v4 addresses because of address shortage and so on. So we have to put several hundred outbound v4 connections on one IP address. And if one of those is abusive, then somebody can just ban that IP address, and that affects the, the, all of the other customers on that v4 address. Um, with v6, we just give each user a new IP address, and that's fine. I mean, a lot of people do default to banning slash 64s by default, but at least it's kind of more obvious what's going on to people. It's kind of more obvious what's going on to us. Um, and abuse is kind of a big thing with IRC still. Um, I say still because, yep, uh, it's 2017. People are still DOSing people on IRC. Um, that's kind of the main disadvantage of IRC, at least from my perspective, having to run all of these outbound connections. We get DOSed two to three times a week, 
two to four times a week? I don't know. Um, that's kind of the general background DOS radiation that we get. Uh, these are all unsophisticated attacks. They are script kiddies. They're not like advanced persistent threats. They're just people going, oh, well, that person on IRC an annoyed me, so just point some botnet at his address and, uh, you know, profit or something. I don't know what they're, what they're expecting to do. I mean, the problem with IRC is you do, you do still, if your TCP connection drops, then you leave the room. So, you know, pe these, these, these people get some satisfaction out of pinging people off. So, um, as I believe it's called. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so this is a problem for us because we don't want that to happen. That's part of the reason why people use us is so they don't have to deal with this crap. Um, but uh, sometimes it's difficult. As I say, in 2015, we got 120 gigabits. I'm surprised we haven't had anything larger than that since. Um, but it is a bit irregular. It's seasonal. We do see the school holiday effect that, uh, that we heard about earlier as well. Um, and... Um, yeah, it's, it, we have several of these larger attacks per year. Unfortunately, I don't have the full details um, for reasons that I'll get into, but it's, it's, it's a reasonable amount of DOSs, and we have to use DOS protection. If I had a pound for every time somebody told me, just use Cloudflare, then maybe I could build a better DOS protection service. But actually, uh, Cloudflare's, I mean, you, you can't argue with Cloudflare's marketing because I've had like pretty untechnical people when I, when I talk to them about DOSs go, well, can't you just use Cloudflare? Uh, actually, we do use Cloudflare, but for our website and uh, most, pretty much all of the attacks we get are directed at our outbound IRC hosts, which Cloudflare can't do anything for, unfortunately, as lovely as they are. Um, and although most cloud providers offer some kind of DOS protection, mostly unspecified, um, they probably aren't going to be happy if we, if we kind of get someone hitting us with 120 gigabits again. Um, so we're kind of stuck with managed hosting because, or DOS protected managed hosting. We don't have the, the I, I, can't, I can't justify spending 100 grand on some networking hardware, and I can't justify the possibility that it's going to wake me up in the middle of the night and I'm going to have to fix it when I can just pay somebody else to do it. It's just easier. It means I can spend my time on better user-facing things rather than fixing DOSs. So our outbound connections, the servers that do our outbound connections are on DOS-protected hosting, protected, and um, everything else is on, on in the cloud. So, oh yes, there we go, sorry. Getting confused with it. So with, um, the problem with DOS protected managed hosting providers is most of them are awful. Um, many of them refuse IRC related customers. Now, I mean, that's probably not like, uh, uh, the, the DOS attacks we get for IRC are probably not like the most sophisticated, so I have no idea why they do. Like, they're perfectly happy getting game servers on, and they seem to, seem to have most of the same kind of annoyed, disgruntled teenagers. Um, <laughs> so I don't fully understand. And a lot of them are bad. That We have, uh, you know, the, our, our kind of... The bar that DOS protection has to cross for us is that if somebody DOSs us and the host is down for longer than it takes for the t all of the other t IRC connections to time out on that host, then the DOS protection is just worse than useless. And that's pretty much the state of most of them. Like, 90 seconds mitigation time, probably that's the, that's the bar that they have to cross. And yeah, the good services are pricey. We spend a half to two thirds of our entire like operational server budget on the DOS protected bit despite the fact that that's not actually that many servers. And they're still not great, and that's why I don't have many metrics, because um, actually our hosting provider got purchased by a large um, ISP with, uh, with a number at the end um, a, a couple of years ago now, a year or so ago, and they still haven't fully got back to the fact that they should probably be providing us with some monitoring. So this is the best graph I've got. Um, that is the last year's worth of, um, of DOS attacks at our server. So 
um, uh, so this is this is at the gigabit links of our servers, um, and so it, and such it's in packets per second. So it's kind of capped at about 1.2 million packets per second. That's about as much as a gigabit uh, interface can de de deal with before it completely collapses. And the green line is IPv4. Now that shouldn't be there because that should all be mitigated, right? Um, but it isn't. Uh, and yeah, I mean, some, some of it is there's a little bit of lag time before it kicks in, and that's still fine for us. And it's actually got better, a bit better recently. You can see the seasonality. Unfortunately, the months are in American backwards style. So, um, so there was, I don't know, it seemed, to, it seemed to pick up towards October last year and then vanished for Christmas. Usually we get tons of DOSs for Christmas. It's all, it's all, it's, I heard somebody else call this Christmas packets. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, yes, and the orange line is IPv6. So, so there are your mythical IPv6 DOS attacks. Um, and they, they do happen, and they have been happening to us for a while. Um, so I think we first saw one around 2015, and at the time it was maybe, I don't know, 100 megabits, nothing that, uh, nothing that IP tables can handle. Um, nowadays, I think, I mean, you saw there was one there that they hit um, a million packets per second, which was above a gigabit, or at least saturated the gigabit link. Um, they're still about 10 to 20 times smaller than our v4 attacks. Um, obviously, that, that graph doesn't show it very well because it's kind of post-mitigation and clipped to one gigabit. But so I think presumably uh, quite a lot of botnets just need to add IPv6 support, really, because um, <laughs> uh, they're lagging behind. Um, uh, but really, uh, I, I actually still speak to people who are surprised we're getting DOSs on, on v6. And actually, having spoken to a few people today, I think it's a combination between the fact that we are actually doing, making outbound connections on v6, which, has, which, which have user-visible addresses that users, and when the IRC networks don't mask them, which some of them don't, they can just you know, copy and paste that into their favorite DOS tool. I don't know what that is, but and uh, and then you know, give us give us a DOS or give or apparently DOS them. Um, but I I've, I've been I've still I still get um, DOS protection providers emailing me, and I go, all right, you know, do you have IPv6 support yet? And then they're like, no. All right, all right, Just email me again next year. Um, so to my knowledge, no, no DOS protected managed hosting provider offers v6 support. Interestingly, the, the provider we use did when we joined, when we started using them about four or five years ago, it, they advertised it on their website. And then when we started getting IPv6 DOS attacks, first there was, there was denial. There were like, uh, uh, I, uh, no, no, you're not getting IPv6. It's something else. I'm like, I've got, a, I've got a PCAP file here. I'll send it over. Um, and, uh, and 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 then they were like, all right, well, we can't do anything. And I'm like, what 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 about your website that said it's you just did v, uh, v6 mitigation? I like it. Never said that. And I, I went to the Internet Archive and I sent them a screenshot of their website. Um, <clears throat> So we're currently mitigating v6 DOS at, at our servers using IP tables, and it's fine right up to the point where the link saturates. And I don't know, I'd, I'd just rather they did it for us rather than having to go, oh, maybe we need some 10 gig capable servers so that we can still keep doing this damn thing ourselves instead of running a, an actual service. Um, so. Uh, I, that's pretty much all I've got, but if anybody has any questions, I suspect I have plenty of time. I don't, actually. Well, I've got five minutes. Yeah. Oh, actually, I do, have one, I do have one additional anecdote, and somebody, uh, one of my coworkers mentioned it to me when I, was giving, when I said I was giving this talk. Um, we used to, way back in the day, mm -hmm. used to host with Hetzner in Germany, the cheapest bargain basement um, uh, hosting company, and when, uh, whenever you get DOS on them, they just black hole you immediately. Um, so we did, this happened a few times, and we got back to them, and they were like, uh, oh, yeah, have you tried talking to the people who are DOSing you? And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, because I have no idea who it is. But then about, about, about five or six years later, um, we, we, we were getting really hammered by some DOS, like somebody who was a little bit more sophisticated than the usual one. 
and um, and and somebody kind of we got some intelligence on who it might be, and we went into IRC and we you know spoke to the guy on IRC, and we were like, "Do you mind stopping?" And he was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise it was causing you so much trouble." <laughs> so diplomacy surprisingly good. <laughs> Story. Great story. So, any questions for us? There you go, Fernando. Uh, what's the kind of traffic that you see for the denial of service attacks? It's just like it it's uh, it's the general selection. Like uh, they're usually re reflection attacks are popular. Um, I, I think I think a lot of the original IPv6 attacks were just sin floods, and um, you know, classic old school sin floods. Um, we, but we have I, ICMP and UDP is blocked at the ISP's perimeter, so I don't get to see what comes in on those. Uh, so I, pretty much everything that was on that graph is all, all TCP. 